Welcome to the Relationship Cycle with Jorge and Nelsa, where we discuss dating and other significant relationships. And welcome back to the Relationship Cycle with Jorge and Nelsa. Poppy, we are back again. And after a little bit of technical difficulty, <laughs> we're going to we try ready, this again. Yes, ready to talk about situationships today. Um, which it was funny because we did our Facebook post and so many people are like, what is that? <laughs> so the first thing we wanted to do is just to give you a working definition for what is a situation ship. Uh, so, and then we're going to give you some signs and then we're going to talk about it because we had such great feedback on our Facebook, um, query and people just really had a lot to say about it. So one of the things is, um, less than a relationship, and this is um, NBC News um, on via uh, internet, but more than a casual encounter or booty call, mm. it says. So a, a situation. That's a lot of possibilities. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot, ain't that right? <laughs> a situation refers to a romantic relationship that is and remains undefined. That is the real root of a situation. Like, you don't know what it is, but you know you're in it. There's some to me the intimacy, way intimacy, but not to put it in simpler yeah. terms. It is a casual, a casual dynamic that has all the feels mm -hmm. and incentives of a relationship without the commitment. Without the commitment part, you mm -hmm. hit the nail in the head. Right. But um, ladies, even gents, you got to be careful with these situationships because they will get your ass in trouble. They can. Now you know. Even when we did the last take of the show, right? I'm a little bit more on the proponent side of situationship, I think. I think it really does. It's based on, do you know yourself well enough to know what you need in this moment? Mm -hmm. It may not be a moment that lasts forever. It may not be a moment that um, it might be in between serious relationships, you know, like coming out of a divorce or coming out of a long stay and commitment. And maybe you just need somebody who feels good at the time, but you don't have to worry about going straight from one commitment to another. That's kind of the way I saw some of the the pros and cons. And I looked at an article, a women's health article, that talked about, you know, what are the pros and cons? Like any other relationship, a situation ship has the same. Um, but what makes you feel like, you know, you've seen you've seen like what happened? Like what, what have you seen that makes you feel like maybe you got to be careful? Well, to me, the biggest commodity that we have in this world is time. Mm -hmm. Time is irreplaceable. So to me, my biggest turnoff is somebody that starts to waste my time or I feel like my time is being wasted. Mm -hmm. And the problem with this is that in these situationships, they can consume a lot of your time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes these situationships can get in the way of you finding what you really want because you're so hung up on the situation person, mm -hmm. situationship person, that you don't allow yourself to open up to another man or another woman or you know whoever you, right. you, you're attracted to because you're so busy spending time with the situation ship partner, but that's just like a dog chasing his tail. You're just going in mm -hmm. circles, but you're not really making progress. And okay. it's funny that we're having this conversation today around the holidays, mm -hmm. because for those of you who are in a situation ship and don't know it, we're gonna give you some clarity. Yes. So for example, <laughs> yeah, right? Absolutely. If you are supposedly seriously into somebody romantically into somebody right mm -hmm. and you guys been going at it for a while but you've never met his friends you've never met his family you've never been invited to thanksgiving you've never been in invited to, uh, to christmas right you might be in a situation Listen, and if you only ever go to each other's houses or hotels you might be <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like we should have invited Jeff Foxworthy. <laughs> you might be a redneck. <laughs> right? exactly. You might be in a situation. You ship. might be in a situation. <laughs> ship. Um, and I agree with that, but I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing. If both people are being honest, if you're being honest with yourself, 
Because I think that's really the root cause of a lot of trouble that goes wrong in a relationship. He said, I don't want a serious commitment. But she heard, oh, maybe if I stick around long enough, he'll get used to me. He'll fall in love with me, blah, blah, blah. You know, you got to go into it with a really clear mindset. Like if this is the parameter, this is the boundary, stay within the boundary. Don't keep trying to convince yourself that it can translate into happy ever after when it's just we're happy right now but i agree with you i do think for a lot of people um they do feel like they've wasted all this time because you know somebody does um typically have some feelings after a while and it's sure. not to say that you can't in a situation ship um and it's a little more than friends with benefits where we're gonna you know text what you're doing and then you know pull up uh, Right. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And like, all right, I'll to talk the, to you later. Right. And I'll ride off into the sunset. Right. So it's more than that. Because I think people, you know, even in some of the stories that were shared with us on Facebook, you guys can catch that. It's on our November 29th post, I think, if you want to go back and see some of those. But we had a lot of opinions and a lot of yeah, participation from lots, our listeners and had a lot to say about it. Uh, and there's some good ones we'll talk about here in just a little bit. But I think if if you're really honest with yourself and you stay in the lane but then feelings can get messy and then people can get to a place where they're hoping that what i feel for you translates into a relationship that is committed and it's not really up to the other person to have to change their mind just because yours changed and i think that is where some of the mess does come in but um you know open clear communication we are advocates on the show so uh, if the other person said, this is what I want and I'm not moving from this, then I don't think it's fair for you to think that they're an awful person just because they don't want to go down the road you want to go down. If you were both telling the truth in the beginning. Yeah, and let's be real, right? That um, if you are both frank with your intentions and like you said, you know yourself and you know the other individual that's involved in this if they are frank and say hey look i'm looking for something more casual mm -hmm. because i have other focuses or i have other pressing matters or mm -hmm. priorities happening and i can't give you a hundred percent commitment for a full relationship because a good healthy strong relationship requires time and effort right and if they can't provide that then some people settle with the situationship stuff and it can work, but you have to be very frank and honest with yourself and you have to have that conversation of, okay, where are we at? Mm -hmm. What are we seeking? And what's the end game? Right. You need to ask yourself those questions from both sides of the spectrum, mm -hmm. from one side of the, you know, yeah. of the just, conversation. Are we just friends or... You know, that whole, what are we doing? Question. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And listen, a lot of people will tell you, we're just going with the flow. And right. listen, I, I use that sometimes and I think it can be appropriate. Mm -hmm. But to quote one of our guests that we've had in our show before, mm -hmm. uh, Kat Tolver. Yeah. She was like, I don't mind going with the flow. I just need to know where we're flowing to. Right. Exactly. And it's okay taking your time to get to know each other. Nothing wrong with that. Learn each other, be friends first, whatever. But again, if you have no connection to anything in the other person's life and you're hoping for that, or if you're the one that always invites that person to something, but they never show up to yours, or I've got um, some friends that I know who are always inviting um, you know, their man, friend, or whatever it is, their, their partner in situationship, to come and be with them and their families, they'll come and know all your side of the, the, the equation, but then you never get an invitation to his anything. Oof. Now, to me, that's a clear, clear sign that you are not in long range commitment territory. Like Absolutely. we're not doing anything other than having a good time. Your family can know him, but you can't know his. Either he has another wife, or, and it might be she's, you know, I'm speaking from the female point of view, of course, but like that person may have somebody already laid out in their life that they, you're the side chick, maybe even. I mean, you know, it could be in a situation ship that you are, you are serving a purpose for that person, but you are not their purpose. Mm. 
damn, that hits home. Um, I think the problem too is a lot of people are afraid to ask those pressing questions because they don't want, they're not ready for those answers yeah. because some of those answers are going to be, be very heartbreaking perhaps mm -hmm. or very disappointing and it's going to make you feel like, well, damn, yeah. like I've been spinning my wheels. I've been giving them my kid free weekends to a guy who just sees me as a good lay. Yeah. And it might be, you know, I think it's impossible unless you're like a sociopath or a psychopath, maybe to not have feelings for someone else, you know, whatever the role they play in your life is. But if they're okay, there's some people who can compartmentalize. I'm sorry, Capricorns. I know you're listening, but <laughs> <laughs> there's some people who are really good at compartmentalizing like what this is in my life. And if you're not one of those people, I think you may not be able to do situationships well because if your feelings tend to bleed out and you know you feel things all over the place then that may not be what's healthy for you but if you're a person who can say i know these people at work but i don't do anything else with them outside of work these are my church fan you know temple whatever people that's when i see them right. you know there's some people who really can put things in a box neatly and let it be what it is but if that's not you, situationship is probably not a good idea. Just, you know, thinking out loud. So, um, Poppy, can we talk about one of the... We had some really good feedback on that Facebook link. Can we talk about some of those? And then I'm going to um, give you guys a few other signs. Are you in a situationship? And these, I'm telling you, I was just like, man, there have been some relationships that I have spent so much time in that I was like, if I had known this from day one... I would be like, ugh, I'm not doing this. Um, so I'm going to read a, a reply that Margo put on here. She says, that's about it for me the last few years, I think. Mm. Not that I want, but it's what I've been settling for. She put settling in quotations mm -hmm. since I'm still technically happy. So then I replied back, that can get dicey, though. And like most things of that nature, it has an expiration date. Yes. You and can't I, be mm -mm. situationship forever. Like eventually something's got to give like, all right, like yeah. what are we doing here? Even those that have been in it for years and years and years, eventually somebody runs into somebody they are ready to have feelings for or ready to make that commitment, ready to do whatever. And then this has never grown or gone anywhere. And that's one of the signs. There's no natural evolution or growth. You're just kind of like in this sort of limbo that just has some hang time like a hamster it's like a hamster in a wheel yeah you know you ever seen those little hamsters in those little wheels they just right. keep going and going and going but they ain't getting nowhere right doing they the same just, stuff you're moving but you're stuff. not going anywhere <laughs> like one of my favorite things um the definition of insanity is mm -hmm. doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result amen <laughs> exactly. and listen let, don't get it twisted there's a lot of people a lot of us there's a lot of people that we know mm -hmm. that are the most amazing purest people you'll ever see and they got their little sneaky links right. and their little casual hookups they just ain't gonna talk about it right but they do it with people they trust so that they're not out there you know doing it's the, the whole, whole world time. and right. i get it and yeah. i get it. listen i get it we've all been there in some capacity if you've dated long enough there's nothing wrong with that. But like you said, you got to be real with yourself. Mm -hmm. And you also have to be real with your intentions. Like, what are my intentions with this? Right. What are my intentions with this man? What are my intentions with this woman? Yeah. Or this individual? And are you both okay if it moves to something different? Because people can be open to that. It's just like, you know, if it happens to go anywhere, fine. But if not, fine. But if you're thinking it's going to go somewhere and he has already told you and has not demonstrated anything differently and it's been months or, you know, years, then if you're ready to move forward, you need to have the conversation, conversation to update that we are not, you know, I had hoped maybe this would go somewhere, but you've demonstrated to me that that's not what you want. I'm moving forward. There's somebody who's ready to spend time with me growing into a relationship. So also, you won't believe how many times I've been on dates and I asked a woman, mm -hmm. how long you been single? You would, you would think I'm asking them to solve world peace mm -hmm. because they're like, Oh, well, 
uh, I kind of was seeing this guy. We kind of hung out for a month or a few years, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, wait, like, how did you just hang out with a guy for two years? How does that happen without, like, knowing what you were? Mm. And she was like, well, you know, we kind of kept it open and went with the flow. And I'm like, sweetheart, that's a situation ship. Yeah. That wasn't dating. That wasn't a relationship. That is a that is textbook yeah. Situation shit. But you know, but then there are some women who want that. You know, if you've had your heart broken over and over and over, then some people are not ready to risk it all and shoot their shot. They're okay with undefined boundaries. At least I got somebody to hold me tight. At least I've got a regular partner, you know, for intimacy. At least he acts like he cares about me. You know, it's not like he just comes over. No, there's some time spent. There's conversation. There's some emotional investment. But it's not going to grow into anything serious. It's going to stay in that level. But I think that's the difference between somebody who's just a casual fling and somebody who's a situation ship. Because sure. it's that kind of, it's a little grimy gray area that, there is. you know, you feel things, but we're not growing together. We're not looking to be married. So I've had, I had a conversation with a friend and just from hanging out talking about something like one of these topics and I told her you know it sounds like a lot of your free time goes mm -hmm. to this this guy that you casually see mm -hmm. but your time is valuable mm -hmm. and if all you're doing is pouring your time into somebody who has no plans of ever making a life with you then are you really using that time wisely and you don't have anything else that you're growing I mean you know you don't have any hobbies that you do together. You're not on some sort of team together. You're not. And I think that's really the difference maker um, in knowing what are you really trying to do and what are you trying to get out of so this, I, this relationship of sorts. <laughs> so I want to chime in another comment mm -hmm. that um, another listener said, um, we'll say Kim. And she goes, it saves some heartbreak, but it won't solve the loneliness. Mm. I was like, wow. Well, and again, it's like, what, what's your point of view? Like, you know, there, um, we talk about there's certain things that you do when you're in a good mood that you should not do when you're not in a good mood. And again, relationships are another form of dopamine hits for some people. Like, this is my hit so I can make it through this period of my life. But I know it's temporary. And again, that... Being truthful and honest with yourself is sometimes the hardest thing for us to do, not mm -hmm. just the other person, but like if you know that all you want to do is go out and feel pretty or feel desirable, but you don't really want a, a full-fledged commitment, that's one thing. Sure. But if you're dressing up trying to get pretty and you want somebody to complete you when you haven't done the work of healing on yourself, that's something totally different and you're not being honest with yourself. You're not really... You're not really looking in those little lonely places without wanting somebody else to fix you or to complete you. And nobody else can do that. I'm here to tell you. Um, but here's another sign. There's someone else or multiple others involved. So if he's dating multiple people or telling you he wants an open relationship or you're saying that, then you might be in a situation shit. You know, if there's always... Or Polly. <laughs> or Polly, right? Because haven't we talked about that, though? We you know, There are valid relationships that aren't necessarily situationships that are working for people sure. out here. And listen, some people can handle that and some people can't. What we want to try to shed light is, first of all, value your time. Mm -hmm. Because your time is just as valuable as my time. Right. And there's a lot of people walking around here thinking that they have a person that they're going to spend their future with. When right. in reality, this person's like, I'm just having fun. Yeah, so clarity is another thing that we want to make sure you are hip to everybody. Like, are you clear about what you want? Are you clear about what's happening in the relationship? And are you clear about communicating that to And the boundaries. Like, and what are the boundaries, set right? Set those boundaries that, hey, look, if we're just having fun then that's cool. But the moment that I find somebody that's appropriate and, you know, mm -hmm. genuinely interested in me, I'm going to let you know and I'm going to let you go. Right. 
Because the problem maybe is... Maybe it might be letting that other person stay in the other zone until they're for sure. But here's the thing, though. Usually, I'm going to tell you something that my mom told me when I was growing up. She said, son, the heart goes where it wants, not where you tell it to go. That part, yeah. Heart so, wants what the heart wants. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, is that a lot, of, a lot of people get caught up in these little casual dynamics, a.k.a. situationships. And not only are they being used for their time, but they're also being drained of their resources. Yeah. So you I also especially as a man too. Oh honestly. yeah, as a guy. Yeah. Listen, you won't believe money y'all spend you won't, you won't believe how many ladies I've had like be telling yeah. me like as soon as I like exchange numbers, telling me about how they got a bill. Or how, like, you know, they want this pocketbook. Oh, and I'm like, oh, hell. Like, already? First? Can we just do dinner <laughs> like, first? I just got the number. <laughs> <laughs> and you already telling me you broke and you're, they're about to cut your lights out? I'm like, oh, shit. Listen, this is not the uh, charity organization of choice. Yeah, listen, I know it's, <laughs> listen, it might be holiday season, but damn. You ain't Santa Claus. <laughs> I sure ain't Santa uh, Poppy. That's for damn Santa sure. Poppy. <laughs> um, you only make short-term or last-minute plans. There's no consistency. They always have the same vague excuse. Work's really busy. Everybody, if somebody's telling you how much they work, either they are seeing somebody else, mm -hmm. <laughs> they got a terrible job that's not going to allow them to date you anyway. So if it's the truth, it's still, like you said, they're still eating into like our time to build together or at least get to know each other better to see if this is going to be anything. But if they're only um, open... When you're open, so to speak, then, you know, that what you do in text, I'm telling you, that's not, that's not, it, that's not somebody who's willing to have a hard conversation with you either and tell you the truth because they're trying to make excuses instead of just coming out and saying, that's not what we agreed to. If you, if you agree to, it. if you as a person can look at whatever romantic dynamic you have, mm -hmm. right? And you have a clear answer of what this is mm -hmm. and where this is going, then you're fine. But if you do not have clarity on those things, <laughs> then you need to find it. Yes. Ding, before ding, 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 ding. <laughs> before you waste your precious time and resources, mm -hmm. and then you thinking that you're investing when in reality you're just stuck in quicksand. You're blowing money, right? Um, you mostly small and dirty talk. Again, you don't know anything about this person beyond the superficial. You know, maybe where they work. You know, maybe what they do. Uh, you know, maybe they got a family somewhere. But if all you guys do is mostly uh, chit-chat and love to talk dirty, then you're probably in a situation ship. And again, and if that's what you're signing up for, we're not here to judge. We're just trying to make sure you're aware of what is happening. Facts. Um, you don't talk about the future. That's a to me. That's a huge Oof. sign right there. Um, they that give away. I know, right? <laughs> they tell you that they don't want to get serious. They're gonna be like, "Who are you talking about? The rapper? <laughs> 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 what future are you talking about, girl?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then he proceeds to tell you about all his favorite future songs. <laughs> um, they show you they don't want to get serious. Like you, you don't ever get invited to anything serious. You know he's like all family you know, gung-ho or whatever, but you never get invited to any of the family things. That to me is like, especially if it's been months or years, people, I'm just like, if you don't know his mama's name and you've never met her and it's been years, like even for him to say, hey, it's my friend. Six months. Yeah. Six months. You listen. Yeah. In six months, you should know whether this is somebody that you want to invest in. Listen, there's Absolutely. a lot of people that like you. There's a lot of people that like me. Right. But there's not a lot of people that want to invest there you have it. There you have it. That's, that's a, if you're really looking for that, guys, that to me is a huge like sign of you should be looking for somebody who is interested in the things you are interested in. Uh, I went to a poetry uh, reading last night. It was so good. Um, but one of the poets, she's a national slam champion. She's amazing. And she said, uh, this guy came up to her after one of the things. It was in her poem, but you know, it sounded like it could have been real life situation because I was amen in it. But she was like, um, he came up to her, and the first thing he said after she got off the stage was, "Oh my God, you're so beautiful." Never said a thing about her work, about what she loved to do, and she was amazing, like a national slam champion. 
And I was like, amen. Because if somebody you've told them what you're passionate about, but they never want to partake in like supporting you in it or talking about it or listening to your work. You know, I, that's one of the things I did do. Well, I shouldn't say this because somebody's going to probably try to use this line against me one day. But I was like, you know, I have podcasts. I do this, I do that. I can tell the guys that are really interested, or at least they're smart enough to act like they are anyway. <laughs> but they'll be like... Oh, yeah. I heard a couple of your shows. You're really good. Um, you have a lot of great questions. You do blah, blah, blah. You know, they go and talk about nice. the show, the you know, chemistry between us or whatever. I was like, so at least they have they listened. Try. At least and they, they try. try. They and try. even if you're using it just to get down the road, I, I appreciate the effort. I get it. <laughs> Not yeah. just, oh, you're beautiful. You're this, you're that. You smell so good. I'm like, come on, get off of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, be real. Um, you're getting bored. Um, and usually you're going to be getting bored with this person because you're really not doing anything new, right? It's like you said, the hamster wheel effect. Yep. You're going to go to his house. He's coming to yours. You might go out to eat, but you know, there's nothing outside but of. Listen, and let's be clear. Yeah. Let's be clear. It's okay to have something like that. As yeah. long as you're both on the same page, it, as long as you said, look right now, I am an emotional wreck mm -hmm. or I am literally, I have too many priorities or too many things. And I just like you to come over and hang out with me once in a while. Then yeah. If that's what you want and that's what he can bring or she can bring, then that's okay. Yeah. But the moment that you start thinking that, Hey, we really got something or we're building something. Mm -hmm. Check I, in. Yeah. Check you need in to check and make in. sure. You need to check in like, and be like, okay, like, am I really, are we really building or are we just chilling? And you know what? If you have to nag about it, if you have to give ultimatums, if you have to, you know, basically feel like you're forcing the other person to your way of thinking, don't do that. That's going to be a life of unhappiness if they do, you know, give in and just say, I might as well. A, a person who says, I might as well, or I guess, or we might, you know, I'm, I'm not getting any younger. If you get anything like that, Less than, I love you, I'm crazy about you, I didn't think this was going to be that, but I am now. If it's not a hell yes. If it's a hell no. <laughs> that part right there. If it ain't a hell yeah, it's a hell no. We can end the show now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we want to make sure we give credit to um, Anna Miller and Perry Bloomberg for this amazing uh, list. If you want to check it out, women's health. Uh, mag.com and that story is there uh, thank you to our guests um, who put in on it on our Facebook post as well because I just think you know if we could all just share some of our experiences like I know I've had something that has happened that my friends probably should know about so it's a sign like some people are predictable and some situations really you can generalize them and say oh that's what this is but if you're just getting out there for the first time you may be thinking that you know if you haven't dated in a while like i was the very first person that i was interested in it was sort of a oh this is the one you know then the next oh could this be the one oh could this be the one i put so much pressure on myself and the and that person i do need to apologize um to the first person that I dated uh, <laughs> online. You know who you are if you're listening. Um, I just want to say sorry because I was so desperate and thirsty and needy for love and affection. But I had to learn. I had to give that to myself. Like yeah. Everything that you think you want, everybody, in another person. And this is Nelson, the coach. Give it to you first. Like, don't look for it from somebody else until you have done it for yourself. That's my best dating advice for anybody because... I was just out there just wilding out and just throwing my time and energy into people who really just wanted to have a good time and they just wanted to go with the flow and they didn't want to be serious. And, you know, they would say those things. And in my mind, I'm telling myself a whole different story. And I'm like, I can't make up stories for the other person. In fact, I don't need to be making up stories for myself. Those of you who do that, we got to like, look at what's in front of you. Look at the facts of the situation. And if you aren't getting that boost, if you aren't getting that sign that things are moving and growing, they're not. They're absolutely not. Let us rip the Band-Aid off today. They're not going anywhere with you. And then you all upset because he gets married six weeks later after breaking up with you. <laughs> like, don't get mad. Don't get mad. 
it just wasn't meant for y'all, you know? And listen, like, um, and I tell this to, to friends, um, I'm a big believer in this with people. Listen to what people tell you and then observe their behavior. Yes. Those two things should go hand in hand Not and there it. should be a certain level of consistency. Yes. When you fail to see that certain level of consistency, you got to rip that shit off. Absolutely. Tear that bandaid off. If they're consistently telling you, I just want to go with the flow. I don't want to do anything serious. No, I'm not going with you to your parents' house. No, I'm not ready to meet your mama. That is like consistently telling you, this is what we have. Please stop asking me for more because it's not what you're getting. Um, but, you know, I do say, though, that there are people that do give mixed signals. Hopefully you're not one of them. Uh, between the, you know, I want to just take it easy, but then you're all aggressive, calling them all the time, texting all the time. Mm -hmm. To me, the mixed signals bag is where things get dicey too, because you're saying one thing, but you're treating me in a different way to get results that you want from me, whether it's manipulation or you don't really know what you want and you need to sit down somewhere and get clear and quit playing games. Uh, because I've seen that, I've seen that happen and had that happen that happens, as well. That happens a lot. Yeah. And you said this to me, but then everything you do is complete opposite, you know? Fellas, I'm going to put this out there. I can tell you that keeping it 100 will get you very far, and at least you can sleep good at night. Yeah. And there are a lot of women who, if you're honest, will be like, okay, sure. I appreciate you being honest because I'm not really in a place right now where I feel like I need that in my life. Because at that point, you're putting it on the woman to know, hey, this is what I can offer, and this is what I'm looking for. And if it lines up, then let's do the damn thing. But if it yeah. doesn't line up, I get it. And maybe maybe in another time frame. Yeah. Sometimes it's about timing too, right? Sometimes some yeah. people aren't in the right space or, or you know, just not the right timing. And sometimes it is that. But trying to force things or trying to mislead that or, or be deceitful, man, that, that, just, that just gets messy and nasty. I'll give you one, one last pro for me about... Um Situationships. I had a friend say to me, and I quite agree with him, that you get tired of dating and you just want somebody who knows the the rules of the relationship, the rules of engagement mm. that you can trust. You're not worried about who they've been with or if they're just out there wilding out, but somebody you're comfortable with, somebody you can be yourself with, somebody you can be intimate even with, but knowing you're exhausted. Like I go through patches. You're not know, talking about this yeah. a few weeks ago. We do. Like, we're women just go tired. Yeah. I'm like, I'm tired of going I out. I get burnt out tired too. Of I take people. breaks. <laughs> right. I take, I, I fall back. I know that sounds crazy, but after you've been on the circuit for a minute and, um, you know, really kind of out there putting yourself out to people, that's a lot of energy that you're, that you're giving to other people that you're giving away. And sometimes you just like, I'm just tired. I'm tired of flipping through profiles. I'm tired of reading stuff about people. I'm tired of, like going for a meet and greet and getting the safety team together and, you know, putting a plan in place. But I do want companionship. I do want, you know, someone who I feel is close to me emotionally without feeling like it's going to lead to an engagement. Like even I feel like that. I agree. Off the and, time, and listen, so. as long as you're transparent and you're being up front then I can absolutely respect that. And I think a lot of people would uh, respect that. But just, man, that misleading and being deceitful, man, yeah. that's just for the birds, man. In any level of a relationship. Facts. Absolutely. So I hope you guys have uh, gotten what you needed out of this show. Um, we will be back with new episodes. And thank you so much for participating with us. Go online to www.therelationshipcycle.com to get more um, episodes, more backstories, what have you. And until next time, Poppy. Buenas noches, people. Hold it down. Enjoy your holidays. Thanks for joining us today on The Relationship Cycle with Jorge and Nelsa. Do you have show ideas? Email us at jorgeandnelsa at gmail.com. Follow us on Spotify or anchor.fm for more great shows.